Here's all the reasons why a Sage is always gonna beat a Glock. So I just wanna say that I do feel that the 320 is leaving behind the Glock. I don't know what Glock has for their next generations, but as it stands right now, my interest has definitely focused to the 320. Here's a 320 I've had for uh, many, many years. It's one of the, it's the gun I started carrying first after um, it came out. I got it right when it came out. Um, this is the first generation with the old trigger and everything. I had to get it sent off to get it redone at SIG and everything. I just took it as an opportunity to, uh, it was dirty. So I put it in the mail and they sent it back two weeks later, all cleaned up and fresh looking and ready to go. So that's why I did that. But this is an amazing gun. This is comparable to Glock 19, right? Okay, and it's it's stock. Except for what they did at the factory for the trigger job, it is stock and I carried it like this for many years. Lots of training courses I've been to with this gun just the way it is. It's the 15 plus one size, the carry size. Then recently I picked up a M17, right? Okay. And this is what I'm talking about as far as getting left behind. Glock can't keep up with this because of where the serial number is at in FCU. You guys are all aware of that. But I just want to showcase how amazing it is because it comes with this old or the original plastic uh, grip. Nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I've carried the original grip the way it was for many years and it's just fine. But now if you're looking to add more to it, this is an Acres Precision steel, aluminum, excuse me, an aluminum grip, okay? Drop the FCU in, put the slide on, lights, whatever you want to put on there, and it's good to go. So if you're somebody who's looking for that Beretta 92 or a, uh, the steel frame SIG feel, this is what you're going to have to do to get that because this is amazing. It is, it's a totally different feel, not better or worse, but totally different. Um, so if you're looking for that steel frame, steel gun feel, this is what, it, this is what it's going to come down to because this does it, this for sure does it. And I've been shooting it as it sits right here for almost two months now. I shot it a little bit before I got that other frame with this frame. Fantastic. Another thing I tried out that I can't do with locks is this little gas pedal. You can get these little gas pedals, pop them right in there. Any frame you got, you got a little gas pedal. You don't have to cut it into the frame like you would have to do like a little stipple job with the Glock. Um, another frame that I've got my hands on lately, I won this one. It's also from Acres Precision. Um, it's uh, the newer iteration, but this is more of a competition style, right? So it's got the really flared out magwell, um, beaver tail is a little bit larger. It's a longer frame. Now, let me show you something absolutely amazing that I saw out there that people are doing with this setup and this setup combined, right? So pop the slide off. I don't have the internals on this one. So I'm just gonna put it on top like that. Okay, so you got the carry slide and you've got the full size competition uh, grip module. Now you get a threaded barrel and then you put on the uh, brake and now you got a competition rig. So that covers your Glock 34, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of what you're doing here. Not barrel length, I understand all that, but the, uh, what you're trying to, the base you're trying to cover with that setup, it does it. I have a Glock 34 and I, I shot that setup and it does it a lot better than a Glock 34 in my opinion. Obviously, obviously because it has the brake on the end. But what I'm trying to highlight is, is that you're not able to do that. That's not even an option for you with a Glock. And I assure you, I, I love my Glocks. I'm not getting rid of them or anything like that. But this is what I'm gonna be shooting here for a little while is playing with these setups. And keep in mind, I really only have technically two guns here because I've only got two FCUs. I'm gonna tell you right now, this right here, this is my main squeeze for sure. I did run it with this pre uh, thumb deal on here. 
um, it makes it not so um, easy to put in the holster. It's that's it sticks out a little far. Um, not a big deal. It still worked fine, but uh, oh, that's for the Glock. It still worked fine, but I just prefer to run it like this, nice and streamlined. I don't like going too far off the deep end into the uh, competition style um, guns. That's where you kind of lose me at. So I don't see Glock in the future being a competitor. Um, and I don't want to say whether they should have won the Army gun or whether SIG should have won the contract for the Army gun. It doesn't matter. It is what it is at this point. Um, another thing is people complain about plastic magazines. Well, here you got your steel magazines. You're going to pay for them. Um, you're going to pay for them big time, but it's what people wanted and that's what you can do with this, right? So I don't know of steel mags being made for a uh, block. Um, you can get the inexpensive see-through polymer P320 magazines. Uh, it's not something I'll be getting, but it's another option. And I think that's what it really comes down to. If you're one of those guys that likes to have different guns for different things, and you actually go out and shoot quite a bit because, you know, I've got my carry gun. I've got a range gun. I've got um, a little more of a competition gun. That's kind of all my bases. Um, I don't compete very rarely, but, you know, I do have one. I, I, I enjoy shooting it. And with the SIG, there are just so many more options available to you. And I think that's what it comes down to. I think people like having options, um, you know, the, and these are just a few of the stuff that is out there right now for SIG. And as time goes on, I think there's just gonna be more and more and more and more. A lot of attention is gonna be shifted in the aftermarket realm towards SIG, my opinion, then Glock. Um, you know, I, I feel bad for all the guys that do really good stippling work because now you're just going to have good um, grips coming from the factory that are ready to go unless you want some super, super custom stuff. And I get that. And that's amazing looking. But for me, not necessarily what I need. This has done real well for me. This is, like I said, this is my main squeeze. I'm not going away from this for a while. And I've got a really nice Glock 17 that I've been shooting two for a couple of years. And that's how I actually learned how to shoot the red dot was on the Glock. And it all just transferred right over to this, ready to go. So thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again for all the subscriptions. Thanks for all the feedback I'm getting. Thanks for the thumbs up. It really helps. Um, and those, the comments I'm getting are amazing because it's giving me a lot of good information. You guys are talking about companies I didn't know about the shotgun stuff because I'm not a big shotgun guy, but man, you guys are giving me some uh, great information and I'm just falling into that rabbit hole like a lot of people are, I think. Um, so thank you for that. So stay tuned for more cool stuff. If you want to check out more um, footage of me shooting the actual setup like this, go ahead and check out the other video. Actually, I'll post it. It should be um, a link right up here, but it's my previous video is the competition where I won this. So thanks again.